sure I don't drop this on anybody. <laughs> hey there, guys. As always, I'm Bo Lorenzen. And <laughs> but what they've got here is on a screen 3D. But that's not the cool part. The cool part is if you watch Jim and I, the movie, there's the guy up there, that was shot with a camera right over here. And most of us are shooting with smaller, with the Canon camera, the 5.2 millimeter twin lens. But Florian has a much cooler camera here. May I touch this? Yeah, sure, of course, please. I, I promise not to drop it too I'll, quickly. I'll another rig. <laughs> <laughs> so this does essentially the exact same thing as my Canon or as a, one of the many 180 VR options, not 180. This you can change the focal length. You've got two Blackmagic cameras here. You've got two individual memory cards and you've got two lenses to focus. So before you start your shot, make sure you check both lenses and make sure the mag magnification matches. That goes through an optical two-way mirror here. Mirror is this way. The one camera is back here and the other here and they're then offset in order to get the stereo you want. And this is about, I don't know, five, six thousand dollars worth of bits. But by the time they're put together, I'm just kidding about the money. But this <laughs> is a quite elaborate project. So tell me about this. Who uses these things? Yeah, so, so this is our Nanorec. That is our smallest baby in our Stereotech family. This and is you a baby high professional camera. Yeah, exactly. So so this is uh, probably the, the smallest rig you'll find, the smallest professional rig, uh, 3D rig that you can use. And we've made this because on a lot of occasions you have, um, you need a small rig. I mean, there's no place for a large camera rig like that. For example, imagine if you put this on a dashboard of a racing car, right. or we had this in a shoulder version where for a movie called The Big Jump, it was a, a movie about uh, ski jumping, ski okay. flying. Yes. And um, we had actually the our DP running with this around uh, uh, um, you, filming. You guys have no idea how heavy this is. This is not something I'm going to be hand holding all this, day. This is actually light. It's, it's two kilos and um, uh, plus, of course, the cameras. That's and, a little more than two kilos. Yeah. <laughs> and um, but uh, like a larger rig is much more, of course, because you have professional cam cameras like an Air Alexa or whatever. You have large zooms or large lenses. But um, with this kind of uh, thing, you can do all the crazy stuff that you could not do with, uh, with a big rig. For example, on this movie here that we see in the background, it was Iron Mask and we have one scene, and maybe we'll see it, maybe it's already gone, where Jackie Chan opens a drawer and looks for something and we put this rig actually inside the drawer and we filmed from the inside out. This you couldn't do with a big rig, so it's only possible with a small rig. And um, you can do all the crazy stuff with this and this works of course for all the cases where you want to, to generate views that you couldn't achieve with, with a big rig. But basically. there is an other side to this also because mm -hmm. we have all seen some horrible things like a Top Gun 3D mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was done in post. Mm -hmm. Right. And very quickly do you realize that this is flat faces with a depth to the background? It's not only flat faces, it's that on a converted movie you have the, the problem that um, you actually need to fake reality. So that means you need to assign for every object um, a depth right. which you didn't record. So basically you have just one camera and you need to fake or make up a second one. So that means all the occlusions, so if you're looking behind the object, were never recorded. And, um, and the difference with, here is and, you and are, the difference this is here is finished in the camera. Yes, we are recording with two cameras, with two cameras at a perspective. And we have the ability with this rig, because someone could ask, okay, why not putting the cameras side by side? But the problem is with the side by side rig, you can just come as close as the housing allows from the cameras. Right. And most of the time you need an interaxial. Interaxial is the distance between these two cameras. You need an interaxial 
which is um, a lot smaller than what you can well, achieve. And I see this. that right here. I mean, you can exactly. you can get a very large yeah. offset, but or right now you have one. about maybe 15 millimeter only. Yeah, and, and you can you can actually modify this. So you, you, oh, you can do that on yeah, the fly? Yeah, of course. You can do this on the fly. It's even motorized. So that means a stereo can pull the IA, can change the distance between the two cameras. And you can even overlap it like by 100%, shooting two times the same image. And this you could use for special effects like shooting with one camera 25 frames per second with the other camera five frames per second and then mix okay. it in post. We had, did this for a music video for Sarah Larson, Can't Tame Her. And uh, we, had, uh, we had her cut out with 25 frames per second in the background to be posted in with five frames per second. And, and you get a really I need very, to see this. A very cool, <laughs> Can't Tame Her, uh, Sarah Larson. Uh, have Can't a look at YouTube. Yes. YouTube. And um, so this we, we did do with this. Or you shoot, for example, for, for uh, IR, um, you have one IR camera, one regular camera, you align both so that they show the same. And then you can create a very believable day for night, like in Nope, like Van, right. Van Hoytema did in Nope, in the film Nope. Um, or you use the, the rig for um, VR intercuts. So like a regular 360 video or a 180 video is almost every time you have more or less a wide angle. So, so you're, you always have a certain distance to the action. And what we did is we intercut this material with the close-ups that were recorded with this kind of camera. We had uh, a project called Behind the Dish. It was about female chefs in the world. And we filmed all the dishes um, with this camera in close-up. And you have the feeling if you uh, wear the VR glasses that like uh, you would be a little um, ant uh, right, on, right. On, on this dish and look around and but, but see this. But this is, there's yeah. a couple of things that you were telling me before. Mm -hmm. So. You can all do this with a 3D rig, and this is yes. something that you cannot do in post. Right. So you need to shoot this. Yeah. But 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 it takes skill. Yeah. And one of the things is that technically speaking, they rent these cameras. Mm -hmm. But prepare your wallet because you're renting the cameraman also. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time you don't want to rent the camera without a skilled operator. Yeah. At least you should have somebody who knows what he's doing because that saves you a lot of time. Uh, I mean, we do a lens change in 33 seconds. We have a video of this. You can link maybe to this. And um, uh, so that means you need people who, who know how to operate it. And then you can work like with a 2D camera with this. I mean, in the same schedule, time schedule, you know. And that's important. So at least, so it gives you, having an operator to this gives you the security that everything will work flawlessly, you know. So It will be an acceptable yeah. shot. Yeah. Exactly. So, but, but you mentioned something, and most of my friends are 180 or 360 photographers, mm -hmm. and camera guys. Yeah. And you said when you watch it in the headset, yeah. like here we have it on the screen. Yeah. And I absolutely prefer to watch the, the, a movie, 3D movie in headset, mm -hmm. because the experience is so much cleaner. Yeah, 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 definitely. But where do you think this is going? Because we keep starting 3D movies and mm -hmm. then they disappear. What, yeah, what, where are we going? Is it becoming a thing again? Definitely. I mean, we see on the success of Avatar 2, which made like 2.3 billion, and this is a That's crazy, money. crazy number, <laughs> 2.3 billion at the box office. And we see that the interest for good quality native shot content is there. So um, I can just encourage everybody to not post convert shoot 3D and do it properly because that is what people are paying for. Uh, That's at, the experience. At, at, at the box, box office, you want to have an immersive experience. And it's the same when, when, when you're saying, so we are experienced, when you do your 360, 180, whatever, and you intercut this with these shots, it's so oh, this interesting is be so it, clean. because it gives you details that you're missing out if you're just having like a 360. Well, and there uh, is another side with that. We can do stereo here with the camera, yeah. but we can also manage the narrative in the image. Exactly. Whereas yeah. 360, it's very mm. hard to cue mm. people to look where the murder is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, you can guide the audience by having these close-ups and you mix it, you intercut it with the 360 footage. And that works very well. So 
uh, I could just encourage. Uh, I'm going to have to try this. Try this. Uh, we've made a production behind the dish from Targo images. Uh, Targo. Behind the dish, guys. Behind the Check dish. It out. Check it out. And you can download it uh, on your request. I believe even for free. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. And have a look to this. And this was intercut with the material from this camera. And I think that's the salt and the soup, you know, yes. <laughs> for, for these kind of movies, because it gives you all these details. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much for showing, yeah, telling very me about welcome. this. What, what, are we, what does a rig like this cost? I mean, it's, uh, it depends a little bit of what accessory it is, but the thing is that even the mirror that we are using is very expensive because we need, we need a good mirror. So mainly, mainly we have this for rental, and then it depends a little bit on the time. So and that if, fingerprint is not mine. If if you have if you have a production, just send us an email and we'll give you a quote. Okay, yeah. and I'm gonna put in the description below. I'm gonna put a link to Florian, so that you guys can contact him. If you have any questions about this at all, you should contact him. Yeah, because definitely. Because doing it optically in camera, as we all know, is the only way to do it. Exactly. That's post exactly. movies. Just no, just say no. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Bo. Thank you. <laughs>